many people ask, how do we know what God has taught us exactly? How can we be sure of what is the right teaching? Well, think of a stool with three legs. One of those legs is scripture, one is tradition, and one is the magisterium. God has given us his teaching, particularly through scripture and tradition. This is his divine revelation, and it is complete and perfect. There aren't new teachings about to arrive. There's not new revelation, as some believe. It has come completely in Christ. And with the death of the last of his apostles, a period of teaching ends. The scripture is a closed canon. The Old Testament and the New has now been completed together as one. When we speak of the sacred scriptures, we're talking about 73 books. The word Bible comes from Biblia, which means library. And those 73 are made up of 46 books of the Old Testament that precede the coming of Christ, and 27 books of the New Testament that follow Christ's coming are written by those who knew him, either directly or through the apostles. And we believe that this is the entire written corpus of what God wanted to be written down and nothing more. And through his providence and through the human authors, God has given us this. And the church has confirmed it and recognized it and bound it together as one. It is the church's book, the Bible. It is inspired by God, breathed out through the Holy Spirit. And so we have the greatest respect for this, these holy scriptures. But we don't just believe in the Holy Scriptures, we also believe in tradition. St. Paul says, hold fast to everything I've taught you, either by word of mouth or by letter. We have his letters in the New Testament, but he also taught verbally. And much that was taught by the apostles was never written down. Much that was taught by Christ was never written down. St. John the Apostle exclaims that even all the books of the world could not contain all that Christ taught and did. Tradition is also passed on, that's what it means, traditio, to pass on. And it was everything that was not written down that was also passed on alongside. Remember, most Christians believed in the early period upon the verbal teaching of the apostles and the scriptures that we have them today as one were only brought together and known many, many generations later. The verbal teaching is very important and it also finds its expression in the worship of the church and in the way of interpreting the texts that were passed on. We know from the early fathers of the church, that generation after the apostles, that there was a way of interpreting the scriptures that was coming from Christ. That was tradition. But the third part of the stool, the third leg, is the magisterium. You can't take away that leg, otherwise scripture and tradition would fall down. The magisterium is the living voice of the church. Christ said that he would send the Holy Spirit to the apostles so that they would teach the complete truth and the Holy Spirit will bring to their minds all that he had taught them. And we believe this gift of teaching, of passing on the faith, with certainty and with confidence endures in the church, passed on by the apostles. We believe this gift of teaching with certainty through time has endured, so that when a pope and the bishops around him teach on a matter of faith or morals and define it for the entire body of believing Christians, we know it is the living voice of Christ that is certain. And this is the way the church has been able to remain one in faith through the ages and interpret the scriptures correctly and also allow new questions to be dealt with that weren't raised in the time of the apostles and to articulate in ever more correct and consistent ways the original teaching. We call this the development of Christian doctrine. This large oil painting of St. Matthew writing his Gospel is in the chapel of San Luigi de Francese in Rome and it is one of three canvases by Caravaggio to remain in that church. 
It's interesting, however, that this image is the only one that can be seen from all angles in the church, and that is due to its position above the main altar. In it we see Matthew depicted as an older figure, writing his gospel. He holds the stylus as if in mid-flow. Above him, an angel floats, the white robes billowing out dramatically. I like the way that the angel is shown with his hands as if he's counting off things to tell the evangelist. Caravaggio here seems to be emphasising the divine relationship between the pair. The angel informs Matthew, but Matthew also has his own agency. He writes. It is a combination of the human and the divine that we see in his gospel. Caravaggio is a master of exploiting light and dark, and we see that here to great effect with the billowing draperies surrounding the angel and the rather poignant image of the saint below, with his balding head, yet still with looking significant with his philosopher's robes, but his bare feet humble. How can I read the scriptures authentically? Well, the church has given us some wonderful rules for this. First, read the scriptures as one, because although there are many books, they are now one together, they interrelate and the binding is Christ. And it's important to see that the old is revealed in the new and the new is hidden in the old. It all points to Jesus. Second, read the scriptures within the tradition of the church. The Bible is the church's book and it's been handed on with a, a way of interpreting that we find through the eyes of the saints. And read it also principally in worship in the sacred liturgy. And third, read the scriptures as inspired in the literal sense because God inspires according to the intention of the original author and that means we need to study in depth the history, the archaeology, the etymology, the sociology of the times to get the right understanding of the text. But also read the scriptures spiritually in the spiritual sense which tell us that the people and the events and the places have meanings also intended by God who is the primary author of scripture. And we're taught things even in the Old Testament about Christ and the church and our lives as Christians and glory that are not immediately obvious according to the literal meaning, but God has written into them meanings for us even here and even now. St. Jerome says, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. So we're really called to know and love the scriptures, but always with tradition and with the living voice of the magisterium.